Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Kobo Arc and the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 7 inch. Both of these tablets reflect the must-have gifts of this holiday season and going forward into 2013. Uh, Kobo Arc is a follow-up to the Kobo Vox and the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 7 is a follow-up to the original Kindle Fire. So we're going to put these devices through the paces. We're going to show you magazines, ebooks, video, content, uh, delivery systems, and a whole lot more. So let's give you some specs on what these two bring to the table. Um, they're both 7 inches. The Kobo Arc has 1280 by 800 for the resolution, whereas uh, the, the Kindle Fire HD has the same. It's 1280 by 800. They both have a dual core processor, although the Kobo Arc is a bit faster. It's 1.5, whereas the Kindle Fire has 1.2. They both have the same amount of RAM, one gig, and Peter here is going to give you the hardware semantics and all the rest. All right, Kobo Arc. On the front, you have a microphone, camera, and a light. You also have stereo speakers on the front, which I really love. Nothing much going on on the left side. On the bottom, you have your micro USB port. You have volume up and down, uh, 3.5 mil headphone jack, and you have your power button, standby button kind of combo, and your status indicator light. You also have this kind of edge you can pull up so you can take the back of your casing off and change colors. And there's about six different cases that you can buy from Kobo right now. Absolutely. Much bigger, and we'll explain why in a sec, same size screen, camera, and uh, light sensor on the front. On the bottom, you have micro USB and an HDMI out, which is awesome. Yeah. We have power button kind of hidden in there, nice and flush, volume up and down, 3.5 mil headphone jack, microphone up top, nothing on the right. Why it's so wide is because it boasts stere dual stereo speakers. There's actually two speakers in each side and it's the only tablet to ever have Dolby surround sound built in, which is, no one has come close to this so far in terms of raw sound quality and volume. And you'll be able to see for yourself when we look at these devices side by side and watch some video and play some music, Big hardware differences, they're pretty well the same. Uh, Kobo Arc has front-facing speakers, whereas the Amazon Kindle Fire HD has them on the back, but they creep up to the sides. They both have webcams. Both of them actually don't have any sort of expandable memory of via SD or micro SD. So you'll want to make sure with both of them that you get the memory model that suits you best but keep in mind all of your purchases from both of these companies are stored in the cloud so if you purchase a lot of content you're good to go so next we're going to look at the software experience both of these tablets are running the, the, one of the latest versions of Android. They both are running 4.0 so you do have a lot of accessibility to apps and things like that. You can see the home screen here and uh, Peter what's going on with the, the Kindle Fire? You have a carousel here uh, it shows you pretty much everything you have slash use slash have just downloaded so it's kind of a 3D slider animation and uh, when you click on something it opens up either the book or the magazine or the app that you have seen there. What's uh, all this on the bottom? We have all customers also bought. It's kind of like an online when you're connected to Wi-Fi recommended uh, things that um, you shows you customers have bought. USA Today, uh, camera apps, weather apps, and so forth. And you can see the same thing on the bottom here right. on the Kobo Arc. Um, most of it is ebooks because that's how, you know, it's mainly what Kobo does. They have 3.6 million ebooks, whereas Amazon roughly has about 1.2 million. You, the home screens are fairly different. You're seeing a very skin version of Android here. And this is also skin, but you also have tapestries which are sort of Android folders. You can look at it as the most commonly accessed things are pushed near the top when you're creating new folders. The default folders are pretty well a combination of icons and widgets. So you can see this is all animated, the things that are recommended. It also gives you some stats on your reading life for your rewards and achievements. Yeah. So it's pretty cool, some of the interactivity. You also have taste profile. So this really helps you establish 
what type of recommendations will be made for you. And, you know, normally they'll scan what books you have and make recommendations on that. But this is a cool way to discover new authors because you could say, oh, you know, I like this book, I like this book. Oh, have you heard of this book by this author? No? Why don't you check it out? So little things like that. So it could almost be a little game within itself. So it's a neat way that the company handles that, that sort of thing. So I guess we're looking at the main library. This is what you see when you click on books on the Kindle Fire 7 HD. And these are the books on the Kobo Arc. So this is all content, but you can, you know, swipe to like various other things, books you own and whatnot. You see there's a... Uh, reading of how many pages you have so this is the full actual book this is the book section of the Kobo Arc and both of these uh, devices allow you to side load in your own books um, I recommend Mobi or PRC for the Kindle Fire and then for uh, the Kobo Arc I recommend EPUB for ebooks but it also text RTF and things like that. Um, so that's that's what I'd recommend. So fairly different in the way that the layouts work. Let's uh, fire up the same book and show you a bit of the reading experience. So their uh, covers are different, but uh, we definitely have the same book here. And we'll go to the introduction. So they're displayed by default a little bit differently, and they're both using their own application for uh, reading books. We ha we're not using a uh, third-party application. Right, and this is what allows you to take advantage of things like uh, Kobo Pulse, chat with other users, see how many people have read it or in the process of reading it. This book does not look too popular at all. And we have X-Ray on uh, the Kindle Fire, and it's kind of the same thing, not the most popular of books because it says uh, X-Ray concepts are not yet available. X-Ray will just basically give you um, people, places, and things of where they're mentioned in the book and kind of a brief history and description on those. Yeah, it's perfect when uh, you're, you've picked up a book, you started reading it, you might come back to it a few months later. Don't know who's who. Yeah, exactly. So. What's happening, you can get a like, quick synapse. So um, we're not obviously talking about how popular the book is that we're looking at. We're looking at the core reading experience. So let's look at some of the things that we can do. So we have font settings, which is pretty much the most important uh, set of settings you can have. On the Amazon you have uh, levels of font changes and they all change very quickly and very uh, they'll change live basically whereas you have a slider bar on the um, on the Kobo where you can kinda slide the text along and get a lot more lot different levels of text whereas you only get really eight or nine levels on the Kindle. You also have margins, wide, narrow, font styles, text-to-speech, and you also have themes much like the Kobo does right here. Doesn't change quite as fast, but gets the job done. Yeah, exactly. If things happen a sec later, it's, it's no big deal. No. <clears throat> and of course, you can disable pulse and things like that. Um, you can do a lot of things like highlights, Things like that. You can get a little magnifying glass here, so for some reason, if you want to get a boost of uh, instant font increase, you can do that. Um, you also have, oh, kind of dropped out there. You also have uh, dictionary definitions, same as on the Kobo. If you press and hold, you can get, uh, oh, I clicked the wrong thing there. Well, yeah, we can do add notes, and you see the keyboards, the uh, keyboard on the Kobo Arc is more of a traditional Android style, whereas this is a little bit more refined to the Kindle. Everything's nice and rounded off, has a little bit of shading, so, so you can save notes to both devices. You can have uh, dictionary definitions pop up instantly right there. Same with this. Google, Wikipedia, or full view, much like with the Kindle, Wikipedia, search the web, which basically just Google. Uh, you have highlights, search, Make notes. Um, pretty similar between the both of them. Yeah.
For sure. So there's a lot of things that you can do. A lot of the books you purchase through Amazon, if there's like errors in formatting, especially if you're downloading books by indie authors or maybe a lot of scanned books, you can actually submit that sort of stuff uh, directly to Amazon, let them know uh, the book is messed up. And then if enough people report that, whenever you go to the Amazon website to buy books, they'll say this book is under review. So this is the core reading experience. They're, they're pretty similar, you page, know. Page turns are pretty much the same speed. Yeah. This one kind of scrolls, this one just changes. Uh, nothing to really make or break your reading experience on either of them. Of course, you can tap the corner here to make a bookmark. Same with the Kindle there, you get a little ribbon. Okay, so we've looked at the ebook experience. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is uh, look at the newspaper experience. So I've created a tapestry here for goody reader material. As you can see, that we have press reader uh, and Zinio and both of them have like their widgets so I can just click on it and enter the magazine I'm looking at instead of clicking on Zinio and navigating in the app so I'm gonna look at a newspaper here so you see we can go to today's issue of the Wall Street Journal and we have the Toronto Star in here we weren't able to get the same newspaper on uh, the each of the devices from the uh, the app stores. Yeah, Press Reader simply doesn't have the right. Wall Street Journal because it's uh, a lot of American newspapers are adapting like a paywall subscription. So you have to deal directly with that company in order to uh, get the benefits. So that's that's the main reason why. Uh, I would say that right off the bat, I'm not a fan of the way that uh, Amazon displays this particular newspaper, much like the way Barnes & Noble does. It's, it's, it's altered to make it more article friendly which is cool in a sense whereas the Kobo is more of an actual newspaper which I really think is a lot better because you get all those ads which some are good some are bad but at least you get them it's it's very familiar if you were to pick up a newspaper and then pick this up it's like holding a newspaper whereas this is the same newspaper but the content is delivered differently I totally agree I and mean, you can go to smart flow same Which, with this, you click on an article and it pretty much dives in deeper. Um, if you press and hold on the article and go to, oh, we're in page view. There we go. You get dived into, you know, the actual, well, article, much like this. Yeah. You, you get some of the book, um, some of the ebook experience with uh, pressing and holding and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in essence, with the Kindle Fire uh, HD7, any of the newspapers that you download are basically autonomous apps. Yeah. So that that's really the distinction there, where they're not newspaper issues per se, but you can think of them as just apps within themselves. Whereas uh, with uh, Kobo, they do sell newspapers, but I wasn't able to find any type of newspaper section on their store for the Kobo arc, whereas we do have ongoing subscriptions for some local Vancouver newspapers with Kobo that we can easily access with the, the, the Touch and the Kobo Globe, but for some reason we can't access them with the Kobo arc. So this is newspapers. The next thing that we want to do is uh, look at the magazine experience. We have uh, Rolling Stone, Daniel Craig uh, issue, and uh, with the Kobo, it's as easy as just going to entertainment, which is the genre of which this magazine is. And we'll go to the home page and we'll just take a quick look at that and see what's going on. Well, I guess we'll let the users decide which one they think looks different I or would if say they look the same. Right off the bat, though, it looks like the Kobo has a little bit more reds, whereas this is more of a true peach in his face, for example. All right. Both are displaying really well, by the way. You can see the way that the magazine downloaded from Amazon is actually displaying the content differently than the Zinio, uh, the Zinio app. So we'll get to some text here, and then we'll see what we can do to alter this. You can do magnify mode. You can see here on the Kindle, you zoom in, and you get, uh, it's like you're looking at it through a magnifying glass, which is a Yeah, that's point. cool. Both have pinch and zoom. Both have double tap for article view kind of thing. You can uh, go and dive in deeper to the magazine and change it much like what the newspapers were kind of doing. 
See, there's some settings there. Yeah. Sort of deeper settings, depending on, like, what you want to do. Establish widgets and things like that. I mean, with the text, you can pinch and zoom. You don't get a lot of the fancy features because Amazon has, like, their own little engine uh, for, you know, magazines that it sells. Whereas Kobo, because they don't sell magazines, you do have to rely on third-party services. And they all have different functionality and things like that. So, exactly. Um, just pointed it out. But they both pretty well do the same thing. I'd probably say Kindle's a little bit more fully featured right out of the box without having to rely on third-party applications. There's, there's really no contest when it comes to the, um, the, just the audio quality uh, between the two. We'll just try to get to. Uh, there we go. Yeah, uh, the Amazon Kindle Fire you saw there. We started off with the Kobo Arc, which was on full, and then we turned with off front the, facing speakers. Oh, with front facing exactly. We turned this off entirely. Uh, turned up the Kindle Fire to full, and it was twice as loud and twice as clear because it has twice as many speakers. And to be fair, we do have the SRS True Media that's on the Kobo Arc almost to full. Right. Because right. I mean, uh, when it's all the way at full, it sounds a little distorted, like anything does at full volume. Exactly. But I mean, no contest in no. sound quality. I mean, the Kindle Fire HD7 pretty well has the best speakers on any tablet in the world. That we that we've not only reviewed but we've also seen it like CES. Definitely any text. mainstream advertised tablet that you can physically go and purchase or find. Yeah, the Amazon Kindle Fire takes it. What about uh, picture quality throughout the movie? I mean, well, I guess we'll let the users decide which they like better. But what are your thoughts? Um, honestly, they're they're pretty much identical. I like mean, it's the same resolution. They are. They are know? the exact same resolution, exact same screen size, exact same video loaded on both. Um, transferred from our our PC here. I, I would say there's no major differences, so it shouldn't even shouldn't even be an issue there. Okay, the last thing that I want to look at is the store and uh, what the experiences look like on both devices because uh, it, when you're buying these, I mean, it's not that you're locked into exclusively dealing with both of these companies, but it's nice to see what the stock store experience looks like. Yeah, with Amazon, it's a little different because you can go to shop, but you're not it's you're not really diving into any specific category for example if you go to apps and then go to store it's almost as if there's a separate app store created just for apps so you'll see it is laid out differently than say videos would look or say music would look so um, this particular one is the app store you'll see there that things are they all do the kind of left and right scrolls, much like the Kobo does, to make best use of the space as possible. All right, let's look at the ebook section of the Amazon store. So what you would do is go to books and then type, uh, click the store icon on the top right. And as I said, it does look different based on what store you're really visiting. It's true. Yeah. So you see, you have Kindle singles, Kindle serials, uh, select 25. Everything can, uh, for the most part be scrolled left and right, much like the Kobo arc. I think I like the presentation better in the Kobo. Right. I find that it's, it's more effective use of screen real estate. Although I would probably say that Amazon has probably a, a deeper self-publishing system like with Kindle Signals, uh, Kindle Select, free ebooks for Amazon Prime members. There's a lot of benefits, but when it comes down to like the ebooks, both of the stores pretty well have the same things. Right. I'd probably say Amazon has a little bit wider variety just because of the success of their self-publishing program and how many people in different markets can do it, whereas Kobo just launched Writing Life uh, this year. So 
maybe in a few in a year or two from now things will change but amazon looks pretty good in terms of ebooks but kobo has more 3.7 right. million ebooks versus amazon's 1.2 million uh final thoughts I'm overall, I mean, the uh, this does magazines better, the Kobo does newspapers better. They both display ebooks perfectly fine. They both do videos just perfectly fine. They both so have uh, cameras, they both have stereo speakers for the most part, and they can both sideload any content you really want. All in all, I wouldn't give any one really a winner or not, but the thing that really just turns the tables for me is the Sound quality on this is second to none. It is absolutely elite, top of its class. Um, with that just alone, um, I would ha I would have to say just I like the Amazon Kindle Fire a little bit more, especially because they have an 8.9 version and an 8.9 version with 4G available too. So one on one with the seven inches i would say the amazon just is slightly ahead but all in all fire versus kobo arc the fire line is just dominating how about you mike what are you thinking uh well i um i like the kobo arc i think a little bit better it's a more of an open ecosystem whereas amazon it's a little bit more closed, but there are workarounds to install, say, like your own apps um, and things like that. But you notice when you do sideload in your own apps, like we sideloaded this Marvel app, that looks very pixelated on the main bar. And so suddenly a really nice bar is cluttered with icons that shouldn't be that particular size. You can remove them for the carousel, of course, if you would like to do that. But you are correct. Uh, all the side-loaded content does come in a little bit uh, pixelated. Amazon App Store is fine, but I, I'm a more fan of Google Play because it's a little bit more software agnostic. Uh, you're not going to really find Kobo, Barnes & Noble, Sony ebook stores uh, on the Amazon app market because, you know, why have your competition selling yeah. stuff whereas with kobo they're like if you want to install that stuff go for it you have full access to google play the arc is totally google certified so it does ship with like google maps local google books google movies and things like that uh both store uh both um Things also have access to the Goody Reader App Store, which is our own uh, app store. So in essence, you do have access to thousands upon thousands of apps with either device. Yeah, so roughly, if you install our client on both of these devices, it roughly has about 6,000 Android apps, and you'll find pretty well everything. So you can even see that the top apps here, it's like a who's who of like the, the e-reader world, and most of these apps are not available on the Kindle Fire. So right you could always do that so I, I will leave it up to the users to decide which one you like better let us know the reasons why you can comment on this video on our youtube channel at youtube.com slash goody reader and for all the latest news previews interviews and industry coverage you can check out our website at goodyreader.com and for a review of the Kobo arc and kindle fire hd7 my name is michael this is peter everybody take care